Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for March 30th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. I woke up this morning and saw that the Lyco Birds YouTube channel has now reached 5,000 subscribers. So a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed and who follows these daily updates. Me and my brother Bobby really appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so so you don't miss any of these daily updates. Kim and I started the morning at the Salmon Creek Nature Preserve, which is a great little spot not too far from Braddock Bay. And we crossed over to the adjacent farm field known as the Bennett Tract. At first we were only seeing horned larks, but then we saw these birds fly by. Taking a closer look, we see a small bird with a black face and a white collar. This is a breeding plumage male Lapland longspur. And Lapland longspurs have flown by the Hawkwatch a couple of times this season, but I happen to miss them every single time, so I wanted to come out to this reliable spot so I could get them for my year list. At Salmon Creek, we had 24 species. Afterwards, we headed over to the Hawkwatch, and it started out partly cloudy with big puffy cumulus clouds, and then it really cleared up a lot in the mid-morning into early afternoon. And then as the afternoon went on, there was a high layer of cirrus clouds moving in, and there was rain to the south of us and off to the west, although we stayed dry. The wind started out light to moderate from the west-northwest, but then eventually shifted more northerly and felt pretty chilly. And it was pretty busy in the park today. Here we have one of the two fire trucks leaving, but there wasn't a fire. Rather, there was an Easter egg hunt because tomorrow is Easter Sunday. So this is a yearly thing they do where the kids can come out and do an Easter egg hunt. And in addition to that, we had two separate field trips from Raptor education classes. One group came out at 10 and the other came out at noon. And I know many people from those groups watch my videos, so I'm glad you could make it out to the platform today, and it was nice to see you and meet you in person. Taking a look at the birds from today, here we have a duck flying over, and it has some white here around the eye, and it also has a fairly long squared off tail. This is a female wood duck. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross. We see a long tail with a rounded white tip, relatively large head, and wings held out straight with rounded wingtips. This is a Cooper's Hawk, and if we look at the underside, we see some brown streaking, overall light underneath. So it's a juvenile compared to the adults, which would have orange barring underneath. On sunny days, the galls that are soaring above the platform often catch our attention, and this one certainly did today. If we look at the wingtips, we see no black. We see completely white wingtips. So the, we would classify this as a white-winged gall, which means it's either a Glaucus gall or an Iceland gall. And in this case, it's the smaller Iceland gall. In this photo, we see the Iceland gall on the left. Again, notice those completely white wingtips compared to the gall on the right, which shows the typical adult wingtips that we see on both ring-billed galls and herring galls. Here we see a large raptor with brown wings and underside to the body and a white head and a white tail. This is, of course, an adult bald eagle. And this is a bird that gave the first field trip group an excellent view this morning. And for some people, it was the first bald eagle they had ever seen. So really nice looks at this bird. And if you take a look at the eye, you can actually see that you're not seeing the eyeball, but rather it looks kind of white and milky. That's because I caught this bird as it was blinking its nictitating membrane, which is just a thin membrane that birds can close to protect their eye. They kind of blink it to protect their eye temporarily. Here's a bird with a two-toned appearance underneath and a small red head with a white bill. This is a turkey vulture. Here's a cool float plane that went overhead. Here's a species we haven't seen in a little while. If we look, we see very pointed wingtips, so we should be thinking falcon. And usually, recently, that's meant either peregrine falcon or kestrel, but this is actually a different species because if we look, we see that on the underside it has some dark streaking, although in this photo, doesn't show very well. But if we look at that tail, we see a dark tail with thin white bands, which is typical of a merlin. And if you only know one thing about merlins, remember this. They're small falcons with big attitudes. Here we have two large dark water birds with long tails and long necks. We see yellow here on the face and bill. These are double-crested cormorants. Here we have a hawk, and looking at the overall shape, we don't see the really long tail we would see on occipiters. It's more of a medium length tail. The wings look rather broad, so we should be thinking Buteo genus. 
And looking at the color, we see a lot of orange throughout the underside. And we also see some black and white patterning to the wings. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a hawk that does have a long tail and it's got rounded wingtips, so we should be thinking excipiter. So we see that it has orange barring underneath, so we know that this is either an adult Cooper's hawk or adult sharp-shinned hawk. Looking at other field marks, we see that it has a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. And just from the way this bird was flying, it seemed rather small with a quick wing beat and quick circling. Those field marks make this an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Also notice the bulge in this area, which is a full crop, which means that this bird has recently eaten. Here's the same bird when it started to soar, and when hawks soar, they really spread out their wings and also their tail. So sometimes on a sharp-shinned hawk, when it spreads its tail, you might think that tip looks rounded. But if it were to close the tail more, it would give that really squared off appearance. Also notice the really small head on this bird. That's typical of sharp-shinned hawks. Less head projection than on Cooper's hawks. And also notice the overall shape. They just look a little more compact. They don't look as long and lanky as the Cooper's hawks do. The wings just look a little shorter and more rounded on the sharp-shinned hawks. Here we have a not-so-great photo of a large, lanky, black-and-white raptor who is looking down over the bay. This is an osprey. In the afternoon, we had another look at a white-winged gull. Again, notice there's no black at all in the wingtips. And on this one, we got a better look at the head and the bill shape and size. And we see that the bill just has a red dot on it. So I believe that indicates that this is an adult. And again, I think this is an Iceland gall rather than the larger Glaucus gall. But if someone wants to convince me otherwise, go ahead because I still need Glaucus gall for the season. Here's another angle of the same bird. And to me, that bill just looks a little too petite for Glaucus gall, which usually have a larger bill and kind of a mean look to their face. And I got tired of standing in that cold wind, so I decided to try laying down on the ramp, which would have probably worked better if the birds hadn't all been the other direction. Here we see a hawk in a soar, and it's kind of a well-proportioned hawk. It's that typical Budio shape. We see a dark patagial bars and a belly band, so we know this is a red-tailed hawk. And we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail, so we know that this is an adult red-tailed hawk. Here's a hawk gliding high overhead. We see a long tail and rounded wingtips, so we should be thinking excipiter. And we see that the tail is very squared off and the head is extremely small, so this is a sharp-shinned hawk. Taking a look at the eBird checklist for the Hawk Watch, today we had 56 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 301 turkey vultures, 1 osprey, 9 bald eagles, 4 northern harriers. For occipiters, we had 3 sharpies and 6 coops. For buteos, we had 5 red shoulders and 25 red tails. And for falcons, we had 1 merlin and 1 peregrine for a total of 356 migrating raptors. That brings the March total to 7,752 and the season total to 7,910. I picked up one new species for the season today, which was Lapland Longspur. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy early, then partly cloudy later with a high in the mid 40s. Winds west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so very similar to other winds we've had recently. Should expect moderate migration, should be Kind of a steady flow of turkey vultures and smaller numbers of other things mixed in. And that's looking like the last good day because looking ahead for Monday, rain showers early then mostly cloudy, high of 46, northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, just unfavorable winds and gloomy conditions, wouldn't expect much. And for Tuesday, we're looking at rain with a high of 43 and easterly winds at 15 to 25 miles per hour, so the count will probably not be conducted. All right, it was another great day of birding, and I'm glad that some of you were able to come out and visit the platform for the first time, and hopefully not the last time. Hopefully next time you come out, we'll have some warm southerly winds for you and a big raptor flight, although we did get to see some nice looks at birds today. Looks like we should have a little bit of a flight tomorrow, and I hope everyone has a happy Easter and enjoys spending some time with their family. Then after that, it looks like we'll have a few easier days with some rain moving through the area before it starts to clear up towards the end of the week. So everyone stay warm, stay safe, and I'll see you soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.